so hi uh. so welcome back everybody now this is the session for the paper presentation and the first session is focused on authenticated encryption and for this session we have two session chairs one who have joined remotely and one from the auditorium the name of the session chair is ian ratela and sandeep saini so over to you the session chair hi thanks for the introduction uh, welcome to the first session and uh, we will have uh, three papers the first paper is entitled uh, revisiting the security of comet authenticated encryption and it's a paper by uh, shay geron ashwin ja and redul nandi and ashwin will give the talk Okay, uh, thanks, uh, Ian, for the introduction, uh, and I hope uh, the slides are visible now. Okay, uh, so let's start. Uh, yeah, so as uh, Jan mentioned, uh, the talk is on uh, the security of Comet Authenticated Encryption Scheme. And uh, basically, uh, yeah. Comet uh, is uh, an authenticated encryption scheme. Uh, it's a nonce-based scheme. So uh, let's first look at the uh, construction itself. Uh, so uh, we have a initialization phase uh, where you have the nonce and the master key K. And uh, depending upon the variant of Comet, so Comet has two variants, Comet 128 and Comet 64. So depending upon the variants, we uh, do different things in the initialization. So uh, in case of Comet 128, we encrypt the nonce. And that uh, value is called Z0, which is uh, the initial key, initial block key. And uh, Y0, which is uh, simply the master key, is taken as the initial state. Uh, in case of Comet 64, uh, we encrypt 0, and that encrypted value is uh, the initial state. And we simply mask the key K with nonce uh, to get back uh, the initial block key. And after this, uh, everything will be performed in an iterated way. So uh, the first thing comes uh, is the associated data processing. So in this phase, uh, basically we can look at the first this AI block. So this I varies from zero to A minus three. So all the blocks will be processed in this iterative manner. And uh, what you do is you first take the initial state Y zero, initial block is Z zero. And we XOR a special uh, uh, five bit string that we call control bit to this uh, Z zero. Uh, multiply it by two to this uh, two uh, inter and this two is basically uh, viewed in uh, Galois field of two to the sixty four. So basically, we update uh, Z zero by multiplication uh, by a primitive element of the field, and then we encrypt the initial state. After encrypting, uh, we absorb the associated data, and then uh, uh, the same process is followed uh, again and again, uh, barring this. Uh, exhorting this control bit so which is done uh, at uh, special position so basically at the start of any input uh, processing at the end of any input processing something like this so for example at the last block we again XOR a special uh, five bit string uh, to differentiate different process uh, different phases of the uh, input processing okay so this is uh, ad processing and then uh, comes the plain text processing so for plain text processing, we start with uh, the state and the block key that we get back from uh, the data uh, from AD processing. And then we uh, do this uh, quite similar thing. So we uh, encrypt uh, the initial uh, state YA using uh, an updated key uh, from ZA. And after that, we use a uh, linear function phi over this uh, updated state and the message M to get back uh, the cipher text c and the next and the next uh, state next input state for uh, for the processing and uh, this control bit process uh, absorption is exactly the similar as before but uh, obviously the control bits are slightly different uh, and finally we compute the tag by following exactly the same process now in this case there is nothing to absorb so we simply release the tag t uh, so uh, basically, uh, uh, barring the uh, first proce process of initialization, everything else is uh, similar in uh, both the variants. 
Okay, so this is uh, the original Comet construction. Uh, in the paper, we uh, proposed another version, which is called Comet version two. And uh, just a note here: so this uh, this version was actually proposed uh, in last year's uh, NIST Lightweight uh, workshop, but uh, there was nothing formal uh, at that time. So this is the first formal venue where we are actually proposing this construction. So uh, in terms of updates, it has two uh, two uh, changes. Uh, uh, with respect to Comet version one. So the first one is uh, the change in control bit absorption. So the earlier what we were doing is we are absorbing control bit for the ith block before that block is uh, processed. So what happens is uh, this control bit i, it actually depends on uh, the input i i. So uh, if uh, so uh, in, in hardware uh, implementations, what we need is we uh, we uh, read this input II, store it in a register, n bit register, and depending upon its value, we uh, choose some control bit here. So, this actually requires an additional n bit memory. So, what we, uh, uh, we uh, observe later is that we can actually move this control bit XORing from here to here. And now, what you can see is uh, uh, this. Uh, additional n bit memory is not required now so you can uh, XOR the control bit at the point where you uh, read your input right so this is the first change the second change is uh, the change in the primitive uh, uh, element or the basically the galois field that we consider for multiplication so earlier we were just considering a 64 bit field uh, binary field now we uh, do that on a 120 bit uh, uh, galois field so basically uh, we increase the uh, uh, field size so this was uh, actually you uh, done because of uh, two previous works by kerala uh, and uh, bernstein et al uh, who actually exploited this property uh, uh, especially in kerala's work what the what he does is uh, basically if you fix the 64 bits uh, which are updated by this multiplication to say zero then uh, everything the, these 64 bits are always same right uh, and the other part you can uh, control right you can guess the key in that way so this actually leads to key collision if the 64 least significant bits are fixed to zero right so this is avoided now because the uh, now we do this multiplication on 120 bit field so you need this 120 bit to be all zeros this, uh, in a way, it reduces the number of uh, weak keys for the construction. Okay, so uh, another contribution of the paper is uh, a generalization of uh, the comet design that we call, uh, for lack of a better name, G comet. So, uh, and what we generalize is the different components of the construction. So, basically, uh, we first generalize the, this generation of control bit and. Uh, for each block so that we call control bit generator so basically it will take uh, the your inputs associated data and message and depending upon uh, various uh, properties it will generate a sequence of uh, c bit uh, uh, strings that you can XOR for each uh, block the second property is uh, the second component is the feedback matrix phi that we use to uh, absorb the message or the ciphertext and generate uh, correspondingly ciphertext or message Right. So this uh, matrix is again a linear uh, uh, function. is It's actually a linear uh, matrix, and uh, uh, the the it's it, uh, in a sense it's actually quite similar to what is been what has been done uh, for Beetle or uh, COFP. And uh, the last component is the key update matrix, uh, which is again uh, used to update the uh, block key. Uh, so uh, basically, you can look at the primitive element alpha as a matrix, and so uh, this is just a metric representation of uh, that particular thing. And uh, now, uh, our goal in the paper is to, uh, depending upon the uh, certain good properties of these components, we give a security proof for the general construction and then derive results for uh, the particular instantiations. So, for example, the, a good property would mean uh, high rank for phi or uh, high rank for alpha, some, something like this. So, the detail you can actually uh, look into the paper. Uh, okay, so when we say security, uh, 
we consider the AED security or the combined security of the construction. So basically, this is uh, a simple distinguishing game between an ideal world, which has uh, a uni uh, uniform random string generated dollar, and a abort oracle that uh, rejects each decryption query. Right. So okay, and this dollar generates a, a uniform at random string for each a, a message depending uh, upon the size restriction, uh, of course. And uh, in the real world, uh, we have the construction uh, uh, encryption and decryption algorithms. Along with that, we also provide an ideal cipher access to the adversary. So basically, the adversary should uh, be able to uh, query the internal primitive. That's something that we require for the proof. And then uh, the advantage is simply defined as the probability that it returns uh, uh, a bit one. Uh, in the ideal world, minus probability that it returns one in the real world. So this is exactly uh, sim uh, similar to any distinguishing game. Okay, so uh, when what we prove in the paper is this uh, big bound, and uh, to just uh, emphasize uh, the main uh, expression or the main factor of the, this bound uh, is this highlighted term which is uh, roughly n dt by 2 power kappa plus rank phi by 2, where d is your data. By data, we mean the number of queries you make to the AED algorithm. And t is your time. So t is the offline uh, uh, executions of the primitive or the block cipher that you that the adversary can make on its own. Right? So uh, roughly, this will be the term which will be uh, uh, dominant for most of the uh, variants. Of course, uh, it depends also on how you want to attack. But overall, uh, this is the bound. And uh, I, I won't go into the proof details here, but uh, I would like to uh, give you some detail about this expression uh, mu and mu prime, right? Because uh, most of the bounds have this particular factor which needs to be resolved. So basically, these are uh, defined for a uh, uh, sequence of uh, uniform at random. Uh, Variable so x1 to xq so you have a uh, random tuple of size q right each uh, xi xj's are uh, of course pairwise independent so these x1 to xq are mutually uh, independent random variables and then uh, mu qn is defined as the expectation of the maximum number of uh, multi collisions in this uh, tuple so uh, and similarly this uh, mu prime is defined uh, for uh, for a transformed tuple. So each x1 to xq are transformed via this uh, linear uh, transformation phi. And then you look for the same uh, expectation of the maximum number of multi collisions over this uh, phi of x size. And in the paper, uh, what we have uh, done is we have proved uh, different uh, upper bounds for different values of q. And depending upon uh, the variant of the uh, G comet, you will uh, need different variants of uh, different values of this bound. And accordingly, we get uh, the security bound for the particular variant. Okay, so uh, just to give you an idea, the comet version one, we get uh, this particular bound. So in terms of, uh, so, so suppose uh, an adversary just makes an uh, offline queries to attack the construction then uh, it will require at least uh, 2 to the 125 computations. So this, of course, rough, it depends on uh, your computation model and uh, several other things. So this is completely uh, heuristic to say that uh, it requires 2 to the 125 uh, computations. Uh, so, but anyway, so uh, if you go by the general convention, uh, it's, uh, you can say that it requires 2 to the 125 uh, computations. Uh, in terms of a data only attack, so basically when the adversary only makes an AED queries and very few uh, uh, offline queries to uh, uh, to basically uh, satisfy its, uh, to basically check its uh, uh, calculations, uh, you require at least two to the 63 bytes. And in, in an attack that uh, makes both data and uh, time, uh, data and uh, uh, online and offline queries, uh, the overall this product should be 2 to the 184. So the construction is secure while all uh, these uh, parameters are less than their uh, respective uh, bounds. Okay, uh, for the 64 bit version, uh, we get some uh, obviously a lesser uh, amount for data. 
So this uh, data we get from this particular term d squared p. Uh, okay, and we we get this from this uh, dt uh, term, right? And uh, time in term in terms of time, it's almost the same. So time uh, you can uh, view as uh, the factor which is used to uh, recover the master key by just making offline queries. And uh, this uh, dt comes from uh, this particular term. And in case of version two, uh, we get almost the same bound as we get get for version one. So uh, the benefit for 128-bit variant of Comet version two uh, 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 against uh, say Comet version one 128-bit uh, variant is is more uh, subtle than this. So basically, uh, if you just make data only queries. So uh, then in the paper, we have discussed that if you just make encryption queries, say, then uh, it's easier to attack Comet version one, or it's easier to, uh, uh, yeah, it's easier to attack Comet version one, 128, uh, instead of Comet version two, 128. So this is where uh, Comet version two, 128 is better than uh, the version one, 128 variant. Uh, but yeah, apart from that, uh, the security is quite similar. Uh, and in case of version 264, we, we get a definite uh, advantage in terms of data. So in case of uh, version 1, we got uh, 2 to the 42 bytes. But in case of version 2, uh, we get uh, 2 to the 63 bytes. So this is coming from uh, that uh, increased uh, uh, size of the field. OK, uh, I'll just conclude with the three uh, future directions or uh, open problems okay. to say. Uh, so basically, the first one is simply this uh, bound for Comet version 2. So this particular factor is uh, dominant in case of Comet version 2, uh, 64 variant. And we think that this n can be uh, removed, uh, but that requires further exploration. And another interesting uh, thing that we observed is that Comet is actually a sponge-like AAT. And of course, with a non-idealized permutation. So this is another interesting problem to see uh, what kind of ideal properties, uh, what kind of properties you require from uh, your primitive in uh, proofs based on ideal uh, model. So uh, basically, sponge again, uh, the the proof is based is in the ideal model, right? Uh, any proof for ideal ciphers based construction is again based on ideal model. So you you uh, so this is again a larger question of. Uh, finding the right uh, amount of right assumptions to make on your uh, primitives. So basically the question is, is perfect random permutation necessary for sponge like AAD? So Comet is an example where you don't need that. And the third one uh, is uh, basically uh, the key recovery security of uh, Comet. So in our analysis, we have identified certain bad events, but uh, it will require a more formal treatment to uh, get the exact uh, key recovery security of the construction. Okay, yeah, the, this is all from me and uh, I'm happy to take your questions now. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ashwin, for mm -hmm. the nice talk. Is there any question on the chat? Up to now, I don't see any questions. So I will start by one and if there is another one, I will just read okay, in the so, chat. Yes, anyone who is having question? in the audience here. Yes, you can please come forward if anyone is having. Professor Roy. OK, so that should be fine. There is a live question. Okay. No, there are no questions from the. Okay. Audience. Yeah, you can ask if you. Okay. So uh, actually, I have two. Uh, you have this uh, uh, bounds and also this uh, alpha in the key update matrix. Yeah. And you say you need a, a high rank alpha, and I was wondering what is this high rank alpha? Yeah. Is it only uh, 
Yeah, I think uh, what, yeah, basically what I meant is that alpha is your primitive element. So if you power alpha, so basically yeah, yes. maybe rank is okay. not the correct word. Yeah, so, so the it's cycle the, it's order. Order, order should be high. Yeah. So oh, basically yeah. that okay. yeah, matrix. If you uh, m power x should uh, yeah okay. equal to m. Yeah, that x okay. should be high. Yeah, obviously. Okay. Yeah, rank so is not the, the order. order. Okay. Order. Thank yeah. you. And the uh, second one, uh, it's uh, about uh, when you uh, increase your field, uh, you go from a multiplication in uh, a field of 64 elements to a multiplication of 120, uh, to, to, to 120 elements. Yeah. And I was wondering, you, you still go from uh, 64 bits Then you do this multiplication and then you go again to 64 bits. So how do you do so, this? Uh, no, actually the key size is 128 bit. So okay. earlier what we were doing is we were uh, multiplying uh, only the six, uh, least significant 64 bits. Ah, okay, I see. So that, that's why we were actually getting the key collision, right? So okay. if you can fix the first uh, 64 bit, which is updated, then for each key, the key will be the same. Right, because the multiplication is just multiplying something with zero. So, okay, yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, I think it's uh, the just, end of. The, uh, I guess it's the time for the next speaker. So our uh, next paper is uh, on uh, paper ready 44, T Haina making Haina even smaller by Nilanjan Dutta. And the time for the paper presentation is 15 minutes. And uh, during the paper presentation, you can uh, uh, keep your question answer in the QA session in the uh, event page. And also after the session, we can take up the questions from the audience like there. So, uh, okay, thanks for the uh, second. Uh, so the next paper of the session is uh, Tiena, making Yena even uh, smaller. Uh, the paper is uh, written by Avik Chakraborty, Nilanjan Data, Ashwin Ja, Kuro Temok, Mancias Lopez, and Meridul Nandi. And Nilanja will give the talk. Uh, Sorry for the delay. <laughs> Hello, am I audible? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so thanks, Sian. Uh, so I'll be talking about T Haina making Haina even smaller. 
So this is a joint work with Dr. Avik Chakraborty, Dr. Ashwin Jha, uh, Dr. Kwatemok Masilias Lopez, and Professor Mridul Nandi. Okay. Okay, so in the last uh, few decades, we have seen a sudden surge in building lightweight crypto systems, especially meant for these small IoT devices such as RFID tags, sensor networks, and due to this sudden requirement of sudden surge of these kind of applications, uh, 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 typically many uh, competitions have been already proposed like this Caesar competition and this NIST LWC competition, uh, primarily target to um, or primarily motive to motivate this lightweight authenticated cipher designing and designing this lightweight authenticated encryption typically uh, i mean looks for uh, light authenticated encryption with small state size and at the same time if it provides full rate that is for each primitive call if you use exactly one block for exactly one message block processing if you use uh, exactly one non linear call so that is very much good so that that is the best throughput you can achieve so when we consider lightweight authenticator encryption typically and we want to have a obtain area efficiency we typically concentrate on ciphers with small state size and full rate so among these constructions a typical design choice is to follow a sequential feedback type construction where Yeah, so the typical, we follow a sequential feedback type block cipher construction and in such mode, you can see as appeared from the screen. So you typically require two states. So along with this block cipher state, you need some auxiliary or masking states as well. So. This is fine. There is not share. Okay. 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 Thanks. So let's look at uh, how. So that was the general construction structure, and let's look at how, how the feedback functions may look like. So by feedback function, what we mean? So by feedback function, we mean that the out output of a block cipher, uh, how the next block cipher input is, I mean, is constructed. So one can possibly use a feedback based construction like this plain text feedback, where this plain text it itself is used in the next block cipher input. Similarly, one can use cipher text feedback. So where the cipher text itself is injected in the, in the, as the input of the next block cipher call. And one can also have this output feedback where the block cipher output itself is feeded back into the next block cipher input. So these are the typical classical choices of these feedback functions. And one can show that at least n bit additional masking states are required for the security of this mode. And typically we have this one construction on this plain text feedback. And even for cipher text feedback and output feedback, even an n bit additional masking state uh, will not suffice as well. So you need something more as well. So concentrating on that, uh, in chess 2017, Chakraborty et al uh, mounted this question that block cipher based A, how small can we go? And in that talk, in that presentation, they have cho shown that you can, instead of that classical feedback based functions, you can use something like combination of these two. So here you can use some linear function G and you can make a combination of this plain text and a linear function on this output to define the next uh, block cipher input. And by the way, so in all the cases, we typically have the cipher text generation is done with the output is XOR with this uh, plain text. So this is basically a combined feedback mode. So where you use both this message and this previous block cipher output together to define this next block cipher input. 
and they have shown that this requires only n by 2 bit additional masking state and it is an observation that for this to implement you need 2n bit XOR so these all are assumed to be of n bit so clearly you can see here is 1 n bit XOR and here is 1 n bit XOR so 2 n bit XORs so based on this result then Chakraborty et al again in TOSC 20 uh, they have asked the question that can you make it even smaller and in this paper so in that paper we have actually uh, considered some hybrid feedback based construction so here what you have so you can use this a uh, hybrid combination of this plain text based plain text cipher text and output feedback so you can see in this first case so you define the n bit into two halves so one n by two most significant bits and n by two least significant bit and the most significant n by two bits are used in pfb mode and the least significant n by two bits is used is cipher text feedback based mode similarly you can define for OFB and CFB and similarly PFB and OFB. So these are three kind of hybrid feedback functions. And you can, you can show that you only require n bit XORs for these to implement these hybrid kind of feedback based functions. So if you look at the whole construction, so this is how it should look like. So this is the, I mean, this forward direction and this is the backward direction. So this is here you can see. So here, you actually requires total here n bit XOR and this is n by 2 bit XOR with this masking state and one can show so here you need you basically because to generate this cipher text you already requires at least kind of n bit linear operations and as XOR can be thought of uh, I mean one of the simplest operations so possibly this is the best what you can obtain so what you have is like this so this is basically the hyena mode so they have used this hybrid feedback based function and constructed an authenticated encryption called this hyena that is hybrid uh, encrypt then authenticate cipher so here you can see here this in 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 this hyfb this is basically we replace this is where we replace this hybrid functions and here you just use this masking state so these masking states are like you just multiply by two for each block processing and for this final associated rate associated data block processing you multiply it by two square or two cube depending on whether the block is partial or not similarly for this plain text generation you use this same hybrid feedback based function and for the finalization phase you multiply it with three or three square depending on whether the final block is full or partial and at the end you make one shuffling and finally you generate this text so this is basically the what hyena mode operate how the hyena modes operates so features clearly you can see that this is a rate one construction and it requires an additional masking state of n by 2 bit which is actually optimal and that is proven in that paper and the zor count per feedback is also n bits which is typically the i mean what the smallest one can achieve because you need at least n bit linear operation and uh, typically we are using just n bit XOR so this is the simplest operation so uh, this is conjectured conjectured that this is the minimum you can actually obtain now in this paper we actually pose this question can you make hyena even smaller so which looks uh, a bit uh, difficult because in all the aspects we are already hyena has reached kind of an optimal state so let's look at the design so how to make the design simpler so if we look carefully at the design of hyena you see that this auxiliary masking state uh, updation for non final block we always update this delta by a factor of 2 for final associated data block we update it by 2 square or 2 cube depending on whether the final block is full or partial similarly for uh, final message blocks we multiply it by three or three square depending on whether the full whether the block is full or partial and at the finalization phase we have a swapping operation so basically there are two points to or two factors where you can still have some uh, scopes for improvements one is this delta update is not uniform so 
and you have multiplications by three and three square, which might take some area. So how can you make it simpler? So to make it simpler, a typical choice is you use tweaks for all these domain separations. I mean, domain separations means uh, final or non-final blocks, and then final block, whether it is full or partial of associated data and message. So you just use different tweaks for each. So for initialization, we use a tweak zero. For non-final AD block, we use tweak one. For non-final message block, we use tweak six. And for final AD block, we use two, three, four, or five, depending on whether the plain text is empty or not, and whether the final block is full or partial. And similarly for final message block, you always you tweak with use tweak seven or eight, and basically so depending on whether this is full or partial, and you so you need a very small amount of tweaks to implement these, so you can actually apply a short tweak tweakable block cipher uh, to process this. So basically, a short tweak tweakable block cipher is a block is typically based on this block cipher and it uses only it only allows very short tweaks so here we will use only four bit tweaks and this will deal with uh, i mean along with this so we propose a modif modified short tweak to tbc and we'll actually implement on this so okay so concrete specification looks like uh, this so here you use just or in all the cases, all the primitives, you use this tweaks value to separate this out. So this is exactly similar to Hyena, except that instead of this delta masking is always updated with multiplication by two, and you use different tweaks for this. And we use this choice of TBC. So this follows from this elastic tweak framework that is also, uh, so this framework basically gives you, uh, it's a framework to, convert a block cipher to a short tweak TBC and we use a variant of gift that is called tweak gift 128 which takes a 4 bit tweak expanded it to a 32 bit tweaks and the, all these 32 bits are basically used in the RSV of each SBOX constructions and we have an interval of 5 rounds so we inject the same tweak at an interval of 5 rounds so features of Tihaina so it Possess all the features of Hyena that are that is inverse free. That is when you when you call this uh, decryption algorithm, you don't need to have implement this and uh, the inverse of this primitive. This is gives you a rate one construction. The state size is optimal. You have this lower low Zor count, and on top of Hyena, we have no constant multiplication by three or three square, and you don't need this shuffling. And one can prove that similar to Hyena, T Hyena also achieves a bound similar to Hyena with this factor n sigma v by two power n by two. So, and this actually satisfies, if you put the values, this actually satisfies the allowed length for decryption queries or allowed data allowed for this encryption query and this time. So these actually satisfies the NIST criteria that we typically follow. And when you look at this FPG and we have implemented it in uh, Vertex 7. So in this FPGA benchmark, what you can see that it takes lesser area and it actually has a better throughput per area ratio as compared to Hyena. And it, it also gives you, and the, uh, so uh, Bunny Kettle also has proven in their paper that Hyena and COFB actually performs very well in terms of energy efficiency. And because this mode also is basically mimicking this uh, Hyena construction. So we expect that the energy efficiency will be very good for this construction as well. And I'll just conclude with this. So uh, recently, uh, Data Security Council of India and Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, that is METI, have organized a competition on lightweight cipher design challenge. And the motivation motivation was to, I mean, build more lightweight cryptographic constructions. And uh, it is expected that the winning algorithm may be uh, further considered for developing prototype for ready industry implementation. And Tihaina has been selected as the winner of this competition. So it would be great if uh, we 
actually this t hyena can be implemented in some industry implementation so that would be really nice or really nice significance of this construction so that's all for me uh, thank you thank you very much nilan chan and if you have any questions so please Uh, just a uh, one simple question yeah uh, regarding this lightweight so yeah. basically the computational cost and the energy consumptions we are seeing right uh, yeah uh, typically uh, yeah apart from that what about the communications over it suppose uh, uh, if we are uh, end to end uh, sorry any peer to peer communications or any oh, so that basically depends on communications the Uh, are we uh, checking these communications overhead also here no 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 so in this is this is basically just giving you the exact construction how this authenticated encryption will be implemented so how the communication cost will uh, i mean what will be the communication cost that will be depend on the overall protocol so how how do we implement the overall protocol so this is basically the cost of implementing this whole uh, okay. this so this cipher. computational cost that means uh, computational time as well the communications uh, sorry con uh, the energy consumption right 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 uh, the second question is if suppose if we are designing this lightweight what about the security are we going to is, is can we have you proved the security is fully secure yeah yeah so the, this security this is actually uh, what we have shown so this is provably secure so we have shown and it, it actually satisfies whatever the data and time limit that is basically uh, stated by this nist competition or whatever we follow actually so you can actually allow data up to 2 power 60 blocks and up to like time for 2 power 112 i mean time in unit okay so that, that kind of computation you can this this gives you security up to that okay Fine. and that that is basically provably secure assuming that you built on so instead of this uh, so whatever the short week tbc you use that that is perfectly secure this construction gives you the security result okay okay Fine. okay thank you thank you thank you sir, thank you, sir. so thanks our third paper of this session is paper id 69 panther a sponge based lightweight authenticated encryption scheme by vargavi kvl et al okay thank you so the next paper is panther and uh, it's written by Uh, Bagavi, Shangat, Sri Nivasan, and Lakshmi, KV, and Bagavi will give the talk. Hello, everyone. Are you able to hear me? Are you able to hear me? Uh, yes, we are. Could you just be a little louder, also, please? Yes. Yeah, I have kept a maximum voice. Perfect. Fine now. Yes. Okay. All audible. Thank you. Thank you. So, hello everyone. My name is Barbie Kavil. I am from uh, Amrita Vishwa Vidya Pitam Coimbatore. Welcome to my presentation on Panther, a sponge-based lightweight authenticated encryption scheme. Today, I'd like to discuss about these contents. The whole story of my work lies in one simple question: How to transmit data securely in lightweight environments? Uh, beginning from 1970s till the recent uh, NIST competition, from the past 50 years there has been a great development in symmetric key cryptography primitives. But there is a new need for AE techniques because the conventional techniques are prone to attacks as they are unrealistic in constrained environments. After all, the hardware is limited in these devices. 
in the recent uh, technology development uh, in the modern era we have so many new devices uh, like iot smart devices sensor network embedded and rfids all these are coming up due to these devices uh, we have uh, uh, so many limitations are there in these devices like uh, area implementation area power consum power consumption resources performance if there is no thumb security in these devices then it would be a cake walk for the attacker to come into the network and play as he wish so we need security because they are these devices are connected in, to internet to transmit data or to communicate so we need to attain proper security goals in these constrained environment that to with low implementation cost and security this is my primary requirement in order to achieve this we are going for authenticated encryption authenticated encryption is com uh, completely different from the plain encryption in plain encryption what we are going to do is we'll give the uh, data to the encryption it will give the cipher text here we are only getting the confidentiality when uh, we are we need authenticated encryption in order to get the authentication also here both encryption and authentication has been uh, done simultaneously so this technique will allow uh, us to ensure confidentiality authenticity and integrity of the data problem statement a literature survey made on analyzing various authenticated encryption schemes their designs and their security details finally we have proposed an approach to design and analyze a sponge based lightweight authenticated encryption scheme that is panther we have analyzed the strength of the panther using various existing cryptographic primitives why we have chosen sponge is because it is one for all cryptographic primitives which is uh, developed by bertoni it is having a wide uh, features like it can be used for different uh, different cryptographic primitive creation so we have opted that and the in the recent uh, caesar or the nist competition also we have seen some 10 to 20 papers uh, have been developed using the sponge construction so the sponge construction is having a finite state that uh, state can be of any bits we have taken 328 bits in our cipher and this uh, 328 bits we have divided into 82 blocks each block is of size 4 bits and this finite state is uh, again divided into two parts one is rate and the other one is the capacity the rate is uh, the rate bits we use it for extracting cipher text or the tag uh, from the finite state and the capacity bits are the remaining that is 264 in our case and the rate bits are 64 here the whole state as i told you before the finite state it is divided into four nlfsrs uh, the state is constructed using nlfsrs p q r s instead of taking the rate bit sequentially uh, which is happening in the existing models what we have taken is we have taken the last four blocks of each nlfsrs and taken as a whole 64 bits and the remaining bits are uh, for the capacity so this is the encryption method of the panther in the encryption method we will be having uh, the inputs as key iv variable length associated data variable length plain text and where uh, the length of the hash to be generated we are going to give a variable length hash to the user so in order to happen that the user need to give what is the length he required so this is the inputs and coming to the faces in the encryption method it the key and iv is given to the state and it undergoes a phase or initialization in this initialization phase we are going to give the key which is 128 bit and iv which is 128 bit after that we are going to give a complement bit of a key for 64 if suppose uh, the key and iv are all zeros then it would be the state is reflecting to be zero if you are going to give a complement bit of key for 64 bits we are giving that so that the state initialization won't uh, go to the zero state that's why we have given that and uh, after that we are going to iterate the state capital f this is the state update function we are going to iterate that for 92 times and then we are going to extract the rate bits that is 64 bits the and the capacity bits that is 264 bits this is the initialization phase once it is done we are going to the absorption phase in this absorption phase it is subdivided into two phases one is associated data processing and the other one is plain text processing in associated data processing associated data is nothing but the header information like the destination address ip address and the user agent all these things which need not to be encrypted but to be authenticated like we should be sure like this is the source we are getting from in that way we need to have the authenticity of the data that's why we are going to do 
only authentication but not the encryption in order to perform that what we are going to do is the whole associated data is divided into k blocks each block size is r bits so the r bits of uh, first aad associated data block is taken with the zor function with along with the r bits from the state update function this happens and then the state update function is again repeated to four times and then again uh, this will be repeated till the last block of the associated data is received once it is done we are going for the plain text processing in this phase we are going to get the cipher text here uh, we are going to do the same like the associated data processing we are dividing the plain text into blocks each block is of size r bits the r bits from the plain text has been taken and zored with the red bits of we, the spot we have 7 minutes left okay yeah so that is how it is happens and in the finalization phase we are going to do the extraction of the tag in the extraction of the tag we are taking the r bits the hash length which will be given by the user we are extracting those many times this is the encryption function and in the decryption function it is similar to the encryption but the only change is the cipher text processing instead of uh, plain text we are giving the cipher text to the algorithm and we are extracting the plain text once the same process continues till the end in the end we are going to extract the tag and we'll calculate uh, we'll just verify whether the received tag is same as encrypted tag or not if both are same then we can say that authentication is successful otherwise authentication is failed so this is how the state update function works this is tp means topless matrix as box is substitution and tp is the topless so here you, we are using topless matrix as the linear layer and substitution box as the non linear layer component so here uh, once the filter function is done the last uh, block will be updated in the nlfsr so uh, these are the four nlfsr these are the tapping position and the inputs uh, will be getting from fp gp rc1 like that same uh, to all so this is the state update function i'm talking about here fp means the feedbacks uh, which we are getting from that particular uh, this particular nlfsr and gp gq gr gs are from the other nlfsrs like suppose for if i'm taking this gp then i'm taking from one block from q r and s and i'm zoring them and given to gp and rc1 rc2 rc3 rc4 are the round constants once uh, we are zoring this fp gp and rc1 we will get the input for the filter function once it is done we are going to do the topless matrix multiplication and then substitution box and then again topless matrix once all of them are done the state is shifted by one block after that we'll update the last uh, p18 q19 r20 s21 blocks of the state so topless matrix uh, why we are opting for topless matrix as linear layer uh, is because uh, it is an mds matrix the chosen topless matrix is both mds matrix and circular matrix so it is having some good features uh, uh, like uh, we need not to store the entire matrix to perform the multiplication we can just store the first row and the first column matrix that would be enough uh, that's how we can reduce the storage also and this is the s box we are using this is a 4 by 4 s box instead of 8 by 8 we are going for 4 by 4 uh, to reduce the hardware limit, like to reduce the space so this is how my algorithm works uh, we are going to give the inputs like associated data plain text and then uh, we are going to uh, ask the user what is the length of the hash to be generated and in the encryption results we can see that uh, we will get the cipher text and authenticated tag and in the decryption also we will calculate one tag if both tags are uh see then we'll get the plain text that is how a uh, verified plain text is equals to name is given that is how it will come out so we have performed the security analysis in order to observe the strength of the panther here panic key recovery attack to mitigate this uh, we, are, we have added once in the initialization phase so that uh, the key the state of the key the state of the spawn never goes to zero state we have calculated i mean uh, we have given some 10 power uh, 9 bits of key stream to the nist state nist test it will uh, perform the uh, how it will test uh, the randomness about the key stream and uh, our cipher passed all of these tests and in the diffusion of key and iv we have given a uh, the key streams to that and we got the chi square value which is uh, less than a uh, 3.4 which is a good score 
so we can say that by all these security analysis we our cipher is random and diffused properly and we also perform the other security analysis like the linear and differential crypt analysis using an ml technique and then time memory uh, trade off attack here the state size is a uh, 328 bits that's how we are we key is 128 bit it is double than uh, the state so we are going to mitigate that and in the fault attack since we are using the non linear uh, non linear feedback registers so the fault even though they are able to give the fault but they are going to propagate in non linear fashion so it is hard to and hard and difficult to point out where the fault is and in the slight resynchronization attack to avoid this uh, we have uh, used this nlfsr techniques uh, so the bits even though the related key they want to find it is hard to get out conclusion the proposed scheme panther can be used in lightweight environments as we have chosen the best component that to with sufficient security and the security analysis shows that the proposed design is having good pseudo randomness and diffusion properties which is a requirement for a good design thank you i am happy to answer any of your questions and uh, to get more uh, deep analysis about the uh, design you can go through my paper once thank you Thank you, Bagari, for the talk. Is there any question in the chat or in the audience? Okay, so any questions from the audience? Okay, there is nothing here. Okay, so I have one. Uh, it's about uh, security analysis and uh, correlation attacks uh, that you mentioned in the paper, and uh, also because you use four different NLFSR. Then um, uh, I was wondering uh, what uh, test did you have done, or how can you guarantee that it's, it's hard to to correlate the outputs with one of the four LF NLFSR at some point. Uh, like we have uh, done this diffusion test uh, in, as part of the correlation test. Uh, here in the diffusion test, we, what we have done is we have taken so many key and IVs and uh, generated the key stream and given to the uh, and calculated the chi square value. Okay. So okay, that's a key square. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so that, that was. Um, I don't have any more questions. Is there anyone? Uh, one, one more question has come up in chat box itself. Ah. Oh, yes. Is there any relation between R and C to be? taken care of in, in uh, I assume, in the context of, of what you proposed, the rate and the capacity, I assume. Yeah, uh, here the rate bits we have taken 64 because uh, at a time in one clock we can extract 64 bits simultaneously. I mean, uh, one clock we'll get 64 bits. And why we have taken 328 bits for uh, state is because we have tested with the statistical analysis. And with the 328 bits, all of the tests has been uh, worked properly. In order to uh, avoid some of the attacks like time memory trade off, and we have taken the finite state as a 328. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how many S boxes are used in your proposal? Like we have used one S box only, like that is the S box which I have shown in the presentation. That is 4 by 4 S box. Okay. Okay. There is one more question. Okay. And that is that why do we need 92 iterations? Uh, here in our case, in my cipher, the highest, like we have seen the NLFSR size that is a uh, 19, 20, 21, 22. We had taken four times, like in order to be on the safer side for the future attacks also. 
okay thank you yeah. so okay so i think it's the end of the session i think you can join me to uh, thank uh, all the speaker of the session and i also thank the three speakers of the session because it was nice talks and nice uh, presentations thank you <laughs> So thank you, Professor Ian, and thank you, Dr. Saini, for this session and your time. Now I would like to request uh, from the venue, Dr. Jay Prakash Kar, to give uh, Dr. Saini a token of appreciation. So for the next, uh, the session chairs who have joined remotely, that is due for him. And uh, unfortunately, we have not, cannot able to give you, <laughs> right? Okay, so thanks everybody uh, for the session. The next session will start from 4.15 itself. So before we go for a break, I have few important announcements. Uh, you can join to the author through Google Meet link for uh, question and association if you have any in the tea break. And uh, the rescheduled uh, session for Adi Sami's talk is tomorrow, that is 14th at 1 p.m. IST. And the uh, registration for the RAM session you can also do. The link is at the event website. 